Welcome to 5 and 5 from the One Stop Co-op Shop, where I discuss five key elements of a game in about five minutes. I'm Michael Kelly, and today I'm looking at Snapship's Tactics, the spaceship combat game with competitive, solo, and cooperative options. And disclaimer that I was sent a review copy of this one. I previewed Snapship's Tactics when it was on crowdfunding, but now that I've gotten to play it with more ships, bigger battles, how do I feel? Let's find out and get to the list. <laughs> My number five point is a mixed leaning pro for my taste, and that's the randomness in the game because this is a dice based battle system. You'll have a target number to hit with each attack, uh, usually looking for higher numbers. And there are lots of ways to mitigate this and make your attacks more or less likely to succeed. But in the end, if you roll well or don't roll well, it'll have a drastic effect on the battle, although you are rolling a ton of dice, so it tends to even out. What doesn't even out as much, and again might be exciting or frustrating based on your taste, is the critical system where if you roll a 10, basically a crit, then you'll randomly disable one of the parts of your opponent. They won't be able to use it the next turn, they'll have to spend resources to bring it back. It can be pretty damaging if the wrong thing is taken out at the wrong time. So again, the dice might be awesome to you, might be frustrating, it's really going to depend on your taste. My number four point is focused on the variety of play in the game, and this is going to be another mix. and. The the main negative here is that in the end it is ships go boom attacking each other. It's uh, basically a dog fighting game and that is the majority focus. Now if you buy into the game enough as I'll discuss later you could have a lot of variety in the types of ships you can field so that helps out. And then in a cool touch they have three scenarios. One that's focused on resource gathering while you're fighting. One that's focused almost entirely on clever tactical movement. And one that is a solo co-op survival scenario but all of these can be played solo and co-op. But in the end it's just three and you're still going to be moving and shooting, so your uh, sense of variety in the game is going to come down greatly to how you feel about dogfighting and the basic movement system. But my number three is a full-on pro for my taste, and that's the Automa system for the enemies that allows solo and co-op. And the great thing is, this is a smart system, it's a varied system, it's a quick playing system, and it's really straightforward. You don't have to track all the parts and stuff for the enemies, you don't have to track much of anything. You just keep track of their life, sometimes they'll have some negative tokens that limit what they can do, and then you flip a card for them each turn, and it tells how they'll basically move, it tells which weapons they'll try to use, and although they'll sometimes get into silly or stupid situations, generally it's really intelligent. They try to track you down and attack you in a meaningful, cool fashion. They can get a little bit sillier when it's multiple ships, and sometimes they ignore an obvious target for something that they targeted at the start of the turn. That's the only thing I might house rule. But yeah, I think the variety in the Automa, even with the base game, you get to four different Automa decks for each type of ship. And I think it's a really impressive system and really makes the solo co-op play come to life. For my number two point, I'm back to a mix for my taste. And this is going to vary greatly, again, by your own personal taste. And that's the customization of the ships and the models. So Snapship Toys, we've been buying for a long time, uh, even before the game was announced. And they are great value. They're generally really cheap, at least in the US. And they're kind of like Legos. You can put them together in whatever way you want. Uh, my kids really enjoy them, but they're also just fun to kind of build and customize as an adult. And the game brings that customization forward because you have a ton of chassis, you have a ton of uh, customization even when you have the same type of ship. They have preset builds. But then if you buy expansions and stuff, you have just so many different ways to kind of modify your ships, give them different weapons, give them missiles or lasers, close or long range combat, focused uh, on movement, focused on scouting, defense, whatever you want. And it can be really cool in a toy sense to pick out your parts and then like actually apply them to your ship and have this everything look so swanky. But the negative side of this, which will again depend on your taste is the release model because you only get two ships in the starter set and a pretty limited number of parts and then if you want to field more ships you have to buy the models you have to buy the decks of cards that give you the components and the rules and the automa for those models you have to buy extra pack expansions if you want to field more than two ships at a time and i think this point is going to vary greatly based on your expectations if you're like a miniature gamer who's used to buying all kinds of different things to make your game work this won't seem like anything it'll probably seem super cheap cheap. But if you're like a regular board gamer who just wants to buy like one set and maybe one expansion and be ready to go, the sort of piecemeal way that they're pricing everything out and distributing everything might be frustrating for you. My final point for the game is a pro with some caveats, which is again going to vary on your taste. This is definitely going to be a divisive game. And that's the tactical movement in the game. So most of the movement of your ships is going to be controlled using this little tool. It shows you how far you can turn with a single uh, turn activation. It lets you move long and short distances. 
And I got to say, as someone who doesn't really uh, usually like rulers and like measuring tools and turning tools, this one is really user friendly. It works really well. It's easy to tell at a glance what you're trying to do. You can pull off clever maneuvers. So I like all of that. But on the negative side, these ships are huge. And <laughs> when things get a little close for comfort, uh, you know, you have to like put the ships on different elevations to get them to play nicely with each other. The game wants you to have a three by three foot table for two ship or four ship play. If you go up to six ships, you need a four by four foot space. So we've been playing on the floor mainly. So I, I love the tactical movement, but because the ships are just so gigantic and can be a little uh, tough and fiddly to actually get them to go where you want them to. But back on the positive side, they do make the tactical movement meaningful. I like how they do terrain where it is purely beneficial for people going into it. You never have to like dodge terrain. If you go off the edge of the board, they let you turn and get back into the action pretty quickly. And when you pull off something clever, like getting right behind somebody and like having them right in your sights, it does feel amazing. So the game certainly pulls off that fun of dogfighting. It makes you feel like a clever tactician. And I think it can be a great time as long as you have the space to play it and you don't mind, you know, jumbling with the miniatures a few times. So overall, I can recommend Snapship's Tactics if you like the idea of sort of the Lego-ish toy factor. If you like experimenting with your ships and putting them together in different ways, especially if you don't mind buying into a lot of extra sets to expand your options. And if you just want a good spaceship combat game with solo and cooperative options, I think you can't go wrong here. But you might want to be cautious with this one if you don't want to spend a lot of money to get more options for your play, or if you don't have a really large space or a floor to play on, and if you are going to be annoyed having to deal with the different ships and move them around. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.